So here's a graph of this gravitational potential energy. And so let's try to get a handle on what this actually means by looking at a couple little examples. Um, so we're going to think about a couple different objects on the Earth's surface. Um, one's going to be object A, and that thing is going to be uh, at rest uh, on the surface. And so what that means if it's at rest is it doesn't have uh, kinetic energy. So all of its energy, its total energy, is just going to be its potential. So you, you go out to the radius of the Earth, and you just say that it has exactly this much potential energy. So there's object A. Right? Object B is going to be thrown up into the air with some kind of moderate speed. So object B is thrown... With, we'll just call it moderate velocity, okay? Well, what that means is, so object B is also at the radius of the Earth. It's also, that's its location. Um, and so it must then have this much potential energy. But the thing is, it's moving. So it's also got kinetic energy. So what that means is on the energy ladder, it's got to be up a little higher. Um, so even though I said moderate velocity, um, we'll draw it up here like it's actually been thrown pretty fast because, right, so here it is now, but it's moving like crazy. So it's going to go up. Well, so its radius is going to change. And what it's going to do is it's going to go farther away from the Earth. But of course, as it goes farther away from the Earth, it's going to slow down and its total energy is going to approach the potential. So you might imagine what this point is right here. That's going to be the turnaround point for object B. It's going to go up and up with total energy being constant, but potential energy, um, potential energy rising and kinetic energy then going down. So this gap between where something is on the energy diagram and the potential energy, this has to be the Ke. Now this has to be the turnaround point because then all of its energy is potential energy. So object A is going to go about this far above the Earth's surface. So we threw it, you know, we threw it pretty hard, it looks like. Um, well, what's going to happen then, so you can see that as you throw things faster and faster and faster, they're going to um, go farther and farther away from the Earth and, um, until eventually you get to a point where you throw it so hard it never comes back. Well, so let's try that with object C. Um, object C is going to be thrown at right at escape velocity thrown at, I'll write bigger because this marker is starting to die. So what you want to do, so, so there's going to be object C. What, what object C is going to do is it's going to be right at the radius of the Earth to start out with. It's right on the Earth's surface, right? But then that thing is going to take off, and as it rises, it's going to gain potential energy, but it's like it's got enough kinetic energy that it never all goes away. And so what you can kind of do is think about it running out of speed to find the limiting case. It's like it runs out of speed at infinity. Okay, so for object C, we'll try to switch markers. I'm gonna say it in quotes kind of. It's like it runs out of speed at infinity. Oh, this marker is unfortunate, but I don't think I'll remake the video just because of that. Um, so the, the thing is, you can throw something faster than that. You can throw, you could just throw it even faster than the escape velocity. Um, and then you would kind of think about it like it's completely escaped the Earth's gravitational well, and it's still got plenty of speed left over. Um, and so what you can do if you want to uh, figure out how fast it's, it, you need to throw it to get it out of there is just compare the beginning state and the end state. So if we look at E before equals E after, and I'm going to switch to black because that marker just quit on me. So we'll say E before and E after. Well, for the before state, let's, let's be on the Earth's surface at escape velocity. So it's got two types of energy. It's got a whole lot of kinetic energy because you just threw it at escape velocity. One half mv escape squared, right? And then it's got the gravitational potential energy at the Earth's surface. So minus g m e mass of the object over the radius of the Earth. Okay, so it's got that at the beginning. Now out at infinity, what we want to have it do is run out of speed out there. 
So it so you could think of its uh, kinetic energy. Well, you could say one half mv final squared, but this is going to be zero because we let it run out of speed. And then likewise, we check what the gravitational potential energy is out at infinity. So it would be like minus g m e m over, but over infinity. When you divide something by a galactically huge number, that's gone too. So to find the escape velocity, we basically just have to solve these two terms equal zero. So you can just move this term to the other side. Um, so just to wrap this up, we have one half mv escape squared equals g m e m over radius of the Earth. Um, looks like the mass of the object will cancel out. So it doesn't matter whether you throw a paperclip or whether you throw a baseball or a rocket, whatever the object is, um, that's going to cancel out. So there's just a given escape velocity. And you see you just bring the two to the other side. So finally you get v escape. Um, equals root 2 GME over the radius of the Earth. So by the way, looking at what this depends on for the escape velocity, notice there's a particular escape velocity for the Earth because the Earth has a, its own particular mass and radius. Um, if you get to like an object like a, you know, like a little asteroid, you, um, you can get these funny situations where the Escape velocity is only like a couple meters per second or something. You could just jump off the thing. Um, so you, you know, you with a even a we can calculate this later. But like asteroids, like the size of mountains, let's say, um, might only have you know on the order of like centimeters per second type escape velocities. And we'll we'll play around with this a little bit later. Um, so the upshot with this, you just say e before is e after. You use this just like any other potential energy. It's just that sometimes people are kind of tripped out by that negative sign, uh, but don't worry about it. Just, just put it in there. Um, the other thing that you can see by setting it up like this is if an object has a total positive um, total energy, that means it's not bound in an orbit. So anything that's bound in an orbit is going to have a negative total energy. You know, so even something like object B, which is thrown pretty fast, yeah, it's got plenty of kinetic energy, but its total energy is still negative. It's still bound in the, in the Earth's orbit. Um, so that's kind of how you use this thing. Again, just like any other potential energy, just throw it in there. Don't, don't let it bother you too much that it's, uh, that it's a negative, that the negative sign is in front.